My friends, you know, so many people say, uh, quit your meanness and be a Christian. I've heard some people say, give up sin and take Christ. That's all right. People mean well by that. But that's not the true Bible approach. The Bible approach is a little different. It isn't quit your sin and accept Christ. It's accept Christ and quit your sin. It isn't quit your meanness and become a Christian. It's become a Christian and quit your meanness. The exhortations in the Bible about how to live are exhortations largely to Christian people. For instance, we read, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience a race that is set before us. Now, that's addressed to Christian people who are in a race. They want to win a contest. He's talking there about people that uh, go out and win a race to get a corruptible crown. He said, we Christians are in the business to, we're running a race to get an incorruptible crown. He's not talking about going to heaven. He's talking about a reward, a special reward given to people, Christian people, who keep their bodies under. That's addressed to Christians. Now, you don't hear God telling sinners to quit their sin. God gives the world certain commandments and the eternal moral principles that are given. Uh, for instance, uh, God doesn't uh, go up and down the country, as I've said many a time, telling the children of the devil how to live. You know, the Bible says we are children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. It's strange how this universal fatherhood of God idea of God abroad, it isn't in the Bible. There isn't one word in the Bible about it. The Bible says, as many received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God. That's the word addressed to it. Uh, even them to believe on his name. Now, we become a child of God when we accept Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. Then we move into the family of God. Now, God tells his children how to live. He tells them that they are witnesses and they let their light shine and, and they ought to live victorious lives and all that sort of situation. But God doesn't order the devil's children around. He tells the devil's children, now if you'll come on over here, I'll take you and save you and make you one of my children. And then I'll teach you how to live, see. Now that Paul went and preached to the Thessalonians, and the Thessalonians turned to God from idols, not from idols to God. They turned to God from idols. In other words, if you're going down a road to a certain place, and uh, you want to go to the other place uh, that's just in the opposite direction, you simply turn around and uh, start the other way. That puts you back on the place to which you were going. Now, the way to get rid of this sin problem is not just to saw a limb off of the tree of sin, give up some little habit. The way to do the thing is to just turn to Jesus Christ. That puts you back on sin. Now, the Thessalonians turned to God from idols. To serve the true and living God. My, what a sweet Paul made there on the keys of the instrument. Turn to God from idols, that's conversion. Serve the true and living God, that's Christian service. Wait for his son from heaven, that's Christian hope. Now you, if you are not right, should turn to God from idols. That's the beginning of the thing. Now you are not going to heaven because you're just going to quit certain things. Uh, you can spend your life sawing limbs off of the tree. That's not what's the matter with you. The trouble's with the tree. The Bible says that a corrupt tree brings forth corrupt fruit. You don't have to do anything to do wrong. Just let the tree bear its own fruit. If you're a sinner, you'll sin. If you're a liar, you'll lie. If you're a thief, you'll steal if you get a chance. If your heart's unclean, you'll do unclean things. If you're selfish, you'll love money. All a sinner has to do is to be natural. All the good things that you do as a sinner uh, is more or less unnatural for you. Now, when you become a Christian, you get a supernatural experience. You get something in your heart. You love what you didn't used to love and hate what you didn't used to hate. And you get something inside of you that drives you down the road of God's purpose and God's way for your life. Now, we Christian people should lay aside the weights and the birds that beset us. You know, some of us have faults. 
You know, if I'm running down this road with a grindstone under one arm and a, a jug of whiskey in the other hand, and uh, the jug of whiskey is a sin and the grindstone's a weight, see, uh, I say, well, I'm going to get rid of the jug of liquor, so I throw it down, but I still can't run because I've got a grindstone that's too heavy. I know a great many Christian people that have a lot of false things. They'll say, well, that's just my way, but people think I'm mad when I'm not mad. Well, then you ought to change. If people think you're mad when you're not mad, you ought to change. That's a fault. You shouldn't make people think you're angry when you're not angry. You should change. You shouldn't be like that. Uh, you, if you have a fault, you should get rid of that. Anything that hinders you, doesn't matter what it is, is a Christian. Now, we Christians have things wrong with us. Uh, sometimes we Christians do things we ought not to do. We shouldn't, but some of us do. Well, we get rid of the thing. Now, that's addressed to us. But now, you folks who are not right with God, what you ought to do is to get right. Now, all the things that you've been doing, you've just been doing naturally. That's all. You just went and did them. And if you didn't watch yourself, you'd do lots more mean things than you're doing. So the things that you do which you ought not to do, you do because you don't do what you ought to do. Now, God's way is to get right with God. A fellow said to me one time, he said, uh, Dr. Bob, I was born wrong. Well, I said, you can be born again and born right this time. He, you know, you can get a new birth. But a fellow said, you know, I just made that way. I just got the devil in me. Well, I know that. I know you have. But Jesus can cast out the devil. He can make you over again. I'm talking to somebody right now. You've said a thousand times, I'm never going to do that thing again. I'm just not going to do this anymore. And you cried about it. And maybe you even told God you wouldn't do it. I'm just not going to do it anymore. But you went and did it. You're a slave. You're bound in the chains of slavery and sin. You're all tied up with the devil. Now, what you all do is get right with Jesus Christ. He can make you right. He can deliver you. He can set you free. He never saw anybody he couldn't set free. He waked up dead people and brought them out of the grave when he was here. You've been in the grave of sin sometimes, bound by the awful chains of the death of sin. You can be made free. I've seen Jesus do that thousands of times. Make folks over so completely, they never had any more trouble. Oh, I don't mean that it was easy all the time, but they got their victory. I'm talking to somebody right now that you're just as sure that you had a second birth as you're sure you had the first birth. Now, we tell our students that. In Bob Jones University, we say education won't save you. Education will press your pants and shine your shoes and comb your hair and dress you up so you can move around among people and make contacts. But you can be fixed up nicely and still have a mean heart. Did you know the meanest sinner in your town can dress up as well as the uh, nicest fellow in town? You can dress a sinner up and walk down the street. You can't tell whether he's a Christian or a sinner. But he's got a heart in that is wrong. The Bible says the heart is desperately wicked, the natural heart, which literally means incurably sick. Now, what you need, you need is a new heart. Now, in uh, religious services, we say, now, give your heart to God. Well, I know what we mean by that when we say, give your heart to God. But that's not really Bible language. Uh, Son, give me thy heart is addressed to Christians or people who are right with God. God doesn't really want your heart if you're a sinner. He wants to give you a new heart. So if you come to Jesus, he'll give you a new heart. And a heart from sin set free. And then you can go out in the world and live right. You'll want to live right. You'll have power to live right. And you won't be doing the things you've been doing if you'll get right with God. Now, notice this one verse before I close. He that is born of God does not commit sin. Now, the underlying Greek idea is this. Notice it now. He that is born of God does not practice sin. He cannot practice sin because his seed remains within him. That's the Greek idea. In other words, when you get this new nature... You get something in your heart. You just can't go on habitually like you've been doing. So the things that you've been doing, you shouldn't do. You've been doing because you uh, didn't have what you ought to have. If you do what you ought to do, get right with Jesus Christ, then you'll quit doing what you ought not to do. Now, that's God's method and God's process. 
you can restrain yourself and go ahead in this world. It's better to be moral than immoral. But that's not enough. You need Jesus Christ, and you can have him if you want him. He says, Come unto me, all ye ends of the earth, and be ye saved. Our Father, help somebody to come to you to trust you, and help him to yield himself to Christ. Somebody is right. And give victory through Jesus Christ to the defeated ones who have heard this message. We pray in the ever-precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.